Welcome to a tutorial on the 8085 interrupts and vector locations. Okay, so back in the previous tutorial, I told you about the INTR interrupt, right? And that this interrupt is non vectored, meaning that you'd always require an external hardware along with the that net needs to be well connected with the 8085 microprocessor, uh, and that this external hardware actually determines the specific memory address to which the program control will be transferred once this interrupt I mean, there is, is any input interrupt request on this pin. Okay, and that there are eight different types of. INTR uh, interrupt request as you can see over here starting from RST0 to RST7 and for each of these specific interrupt requests on the INTR pane the program control is transferred to these uh, you know specific memory locations as I've just given out uh, on the right okay but other than that we also had you know other interrupt pins which were well vectored that included the trap and the RST 7.5, 6.5 and 5.5 pins correspondingly and all of them as I said are vectored interrupts meaning they have the I mean the necessary circuitry to transfer these interrupt I mean whenever there is an interrupt uh, request input on these pins okay the necessary circuitry to transfer the program control to a specific memory location is just embedded within the 8085 chip Okay, and we don't need any kind of external hardware to do that as in the case of INTR pin. Okay, so now the fact, I mean uh, the uh, matter that I'm just going to discuss over here it's that, well, I said that, uh, you know, uh, the vectored interrupts, okay, the trap and the RST pins, well, they get directed to the corresponding memory location in order to transfer the program control whenever interrupted and we said that the circuit is present within the 8085. Now the question is, uh, well, how does this circuit basically looks like? So how does the circuit, okay, the internal circuit actually look like? Okay, so that's exactly the question that I'm gonna answer over here in this tutorial. So this is exactly the area we're gonna focus. Okay, so I'm just bringing up a logic diagram that'll just, you know, have the answer to this question. Okay, so this was actually the internal vectoring circuit that I was just talking about. Let's pull the page down a bit. Okay. Now the entire image is yeah perfectly visible. So you can see that well for each of the uh, interrupt pins, okay, starting from well trap and then RST 7.5, 6.5 and even 5.5, well all of these pins, well uh, they have a particular flip-flop. So you see these boxes over here? Okay, these boxes are actually, well, not normal, I mean not just boxes like that. Uh, these are actually, well, flip-flops. I, I cannot elaborate all of their, uh, you know, uh, basic parts over here due to, uh, for the fear of that the diagram could get congested. Okay, so that way I'm just telling you all uh, verbally. So these are actually flip-flops and that's why you'll see that, well, we have this either a level trigger or an edge trigger symbol right in the beginning, okay, over here at the left. So whenever there is a particular signal falling, okay, then each of these uh, flip-flops of the corresponding uh, interrupt pins, they just get set, okay? I mean, they just, they're just sent to logic one voltage level, okay? And this voltage level is held and then later sent on to a particular logic circuit over here. Now, well, for the trap pin, as you can see, uh, we saw that, well, there was no control over the trap pin, okay? And it's only because of the trap pins, uh, you know, uh, the input of the trap pin, well, it's not associated with any kind of control logic circuitry uh, inside the uh, 8085, okay? So it just, uh, I mean, uh, the output of the trap pin, as you can see, that it just goes straight, okay? There is no, and, and it doesn't indulge with any kind of internal uh, logic control circuitry. So that's why we cannot control trap, okay? But on the other hand, for the RST interrupts, as you can see, uh, we, we see that, well, the RST 7.5 is basically a uh, an edge-triggered interrupt, okay, a positive edge-triggered uh, interrupt pin, whereas that of RST 6.5 and 5.5, they are level-triggered. Okay, so I'm going to write that down over here. So these are basically 
level triggered interrupts okay while that of RST 7.5 is an edge triggered a positive edge triggered interrupt okay so now you can see that well uh, in the previous tutorial we also saw that well we can control the RST 7.5 whether this uh, pin is either set or reset I mean whether this pin is either enabled or disabled we can also control it by a particular bit okay as we saw in the uh, previous uh, tutorial so this particular control is just brought about with this flip-flop so it, it'll be better if I just bring out the picture over here okay here it is now I was just talking about this particular bit D4 that you're supposed to set in the accumulator in order to preserve the input interrupt signal on the RST 7.5 pin okay so as you can see that if you would have uh, so if, basically this particular flip-flop that is there uh, well this just ensures a higher bit I mean a higher degree of control over uh, the I mean over enabling the RST 7.5 uh, interrupt input okay so that's what is just controlled with this default bit so you're supposed to uh, well put it to a logic zero level in order to let the interrupt signal you know just pass off and keep this particular flip-flop that's the uh, as you can understand it's a basically a D flip-flop so in order to keep the D flip-flop from you know clearing out because if it gets reset once then of course the in input data on the RST 7.5 uh, pin would just get lost okay and we just want this data to be held by the flip-flop okay and uh, you can see that in order to control the reset function that's the clear function of the flip-flop that's the D flip-flop over here uh, which is internal to the 8085 uh, chip we also have a, a NOR gate over here where the two corresponding inputs of the NOR gate are the reset okay and another that's RST 7.5 interrupt recognized so whenever the RST 7.5 5 interrupt is recognized we can basically clear the content of the D flip-flop okay by just uh, you know uh, putting a logic one input uh, to the NOR gate on either one of its pins okay that would just uh, result in clearing the flip-flop now you can see that whenever whichever input well comes from the RST 7.5 uh, line okay it is sent to an AND gate, a three input AND gate that's gate A3 okay so here we also have you know the three corresponding masking controls which is just you know controlled by you know setting uh, all the D2, D1 and D0 corresponding bits of the accumulator data byte to a logic one voltage level which would just you know mask these uh, interrupt inputs okay I'm just talking about the RST uh, interrupts over here okay so just keeping that in mind uh, you can also see over here that um, whenever uh, you can see that well uh, apart from the trap the or all the RST uh, interrupts in I mean interrupt inputs that we have over here well we can see that all of them I mean especially there are AND gates that I'm just talking about over here there's a gate A3 A2 and A1 uh, through which the interrupt request signals actually pass to the inside or the processing unit of the 8085 microprocessor we see that well these AND gates being three input AND gates okay each of their inputs I mean uh, one of each of the uh, inputs to the AND gates A3, A2 and A1 are connected to a common enable line that is just branches out from this interrupt enable control flip-flop which is just placed over here okay and to the set input of the flip-flop we got the enable interrupt signal so whenever you just uh, you, you know, send in the instruction enable interrupt or EI in your program there is a logic one signal falling on the S uh, input to this particular interrupt enable flip-flop okay otherwise uh, whenever uh, you would uh, I mean okay fine so I'll just come to it a little, little later so upon enabling I mean upon setting up this instruction over here you can just enable the interrupt and uh, I mean enable this flip-flop over here and that would just result in enabling all these corresponding gates A3, A2 and A1 
so that uh, these gates just you know open up I mean there is no uh, restriction of uh, flow of control of the each of the uh, from each of the RST interrupt inputs to the inside of the 8085 so they just you know act as um, gate openers okay so they just enable all these gates okay and uh, likewise well you see that the controls I mean uh, the uh, inputs to the corresponding RST uh, inter pins okay they just you know flow in without any kind of resistance into the inside of the 8085 okay now in order to well uh, the, the thing that I was just you know going to say over there that well in order to reset this interrupt enable flip-flop that we have over here that just controls the common enable line to the gates A3, A2 and A1 we have an OR gate okay three input OR gate where uh, that's just connect whose output is just connected to the reset pin of the interrupt enable flip-flop okay that's gate O I'm just talking about this OR gate that you see over here okay so uh, each of the three inputs of this uh, OR gate O uh, is just connected to three different controls over here so one is connected to any interrupt recognized so this is uh, gonna be a logic one I mean this particular input which, which just corresponds to well any interrupt recognized this just well uh, represents uh, the condition where if there is any kind of interrupt okay then we'd have a logic one input over here okay and apart from that we have uh, another uh, input for that of the reset signal and the third one for the DI that is disable interrupt so whenever you use a DI uh, command in your uh, program that's a disable interrupt uh, command okay it just leads to uh, setting up of a logic one input right over here that's the input to the OR gate okay that results in resetting the interrupt uh, that's the interrupt enable flip-flop over here so this just results in disabling each of the gates A3, A2 and A1 and so at that moment none of the RST interrupt pins can basically accept and I mean the interrupt inputs that just fall on the RST uh, interrupt pins they are just not recognized because they cannot flow to the inside of the 8085 at that moment okay and furthermore you can see that well this entire hardware that is present inside the 8085 microprocessor okay there's an entire internal circuit uh, with all these logic gates and all they just perform the vectoring process I mean they also perform you know controlling each of the uh, inputs okay and they also perform a vectoring process uh, by which they just send in as you can see that they, they just send in each of the inputs from uh, I mean interrupt inputs from each of the corresponding RST uh, interrupt pins to the, their corresponding memory call locations like for example RST 7.5 input is just sent to the call location 003CH for 6.5 it's 0034H and uh, similarly for 5.5 it's 002CH and trap well it just doesn't pass through any kind of um, well logic control circuitry but it's just uh, you know vectored to the location 0024H and well in a way you might think well how the INTR uh, input it might be you know uh, organized within the 8085 microprocessor well to make things easy we have just included it over here so you see that well there from the uh, enable line that just you know branches out from this interrupt enable control uh, flip-flop okay one of the line goes into a gate that's just known I mean an AND gate that is that could be called well um, gate G okay so to the input one of the inputs of this gate G is the interrupt I mean the output of the interrupt enable control flip-flop whereas the corresponding input on uh, the uh, INTR pin forms the other uh, input to this gate G okay now whenever uh, there is a logic one output from gate G you can see that it just enables a circuit okay or it just you know triggers a circuit which is a little bit complex and I just you know thought that well in order to avoid complexity uh, we might just you know just look at the circuit as a block diagram okay so for the time being just treated as a block and now this particular circuitry it just enables uh, the uh, 8085 to obtain the corresponding uh, 
hex code of the corresponding you know RST interrupt request okay you know that there are eight different types of RST interrupt request as I just you know yeah mentioned in the beginning of the tutorial okay so here you can basically see them so for each of these RST interrupt requests that can basically fall on the INTR pin it derives I mean, this particular circuit it derives the corresponding hex code through the 8085's uh, lower order address data bus that is from the 87 to 80 pins so through these pins its corresponding hex code is just obtained by this circuit and with that particular hex code okay depending upon uh, the uh, you know um, input code coming in the control is vectored to these corresponding locations now due to the need for this external hardware circuit okay due to the need of this for this external hardware circuit uh, to be connected through the data bus and all we call the INTR pin as a non vectored pin because its vectoring circuit needs to have another hardware I mean externally connected piece of hardware through which its uh, memory call location uh, could be I mean the control of the program could be just transferred to the memory call location okay and it just doesn't happen internally uh, and automatically like for the other uh, vectored interrupts that we see over here okay so I guess I've just made myself clear about the concepts uh, regarding the interrupting process of the 8085 so we're gonna meet you next in the forthcoming tutorial so till then it's just gonna be a short goodbye for now and well thanks for watching